thanks for the introduction. Perhaps a uh, few words uh, to me as a person. I'm doing this talk in uh, with uh, two hats on my head. First one is uh, I'm uh, doing since more than 20 years my own company in uh, consulting for those migration projects. And uh, the second hat is as um, the moderator said, uh, I'm the, uh, nowadays the court chair of the certification committee from uh, the Document Foundation who are doing uh, certificates for such uh, service consultants who are doing in practice in, in uh, real life such uh, uh, migration projects. Um, uh, that's perhaps interesting. So this is uh, some professional deployments we are uh, supporting in Germany. Uh, it's not so known in, in uh, Asia. Perhaps you have an uh, idea of this one. This is Bosch one. This is one of the hugest uh, deployment we ever um, have supported uh, worldwide for Bosch, uh, who is doing also uh, open source stuff on the uh, desktop, um, uh, mainly with their own IT department, but certainly they need specific uh, certified consultants for doing special um, project items, which I want to um, introduce you a little bit, just six highlighted uh, items because of the shortness of the, of the time we have in this slot. But first of all, what is LibreOffice? I, I think, uh, give me a hand who, do, who know what LibreOffice per se is. Yeah, I see that most of you know it. So uh, let me introduce what's above. Uh, you all know LibreOffice um, with its roots in OpenOffice. It's a client uh, installation, a desktop uh, deployment. But it also runs as core technology for uh, the uh, other uh, devices you see there. So for an online version of LibreOffice, it's not the LibreOffice online version, but there are other ecosystem partners who are doing with the core technology of LibreOffice, their own branded um, online version. But under the hood, it's pure LibreOffice and brought in these uh, different devices by their own um, ecosystem partner solution. So this is why I said uh, nowadays we are not just talking about LibreOffice on desktop, um, more and more about online browser and mobile devices. But let me introduce the first item or the first issue in such migration projects. This is um, this one. Um, we all hiding through browser-based uh, solutions, cloud collaborations, and so on. Certainly, this is very, very important. I will do another uh, item with this, but let me say desktop clients is still and will still be needed in the future. Um, unfortunately, and sad to say, for example, in Germany, there are so much areas where you are not online and um, especially in areas where you have uh, workers uh, um, who have to do their homework, for example, you need such a desktop um, client installation for doing office productivity work uh, with it. So this is um, very, very important because um, the work doubled. The work doubled uh, in the sense that uh, we have to care about not only about an online solution for productivity uh, suites, but also for deployment work and so on on the client, on the, on the desktop, the old uh, um, uh, devices. Uh, nevertheless, in the last 10 years, our big, um, uh, how do you say, our big player in the market, uh, let's say the word Microsoft Office is doing his uh, UI, especially for desktop uh, ahead and introduced an, um, uh, different uh, things, a, a new tapped UI. You will see an, an answer of LibreOffice uh, to that, but also um, some developments in uh, assistant functions, very interesting. Um, uh, which are uh, AI-based, uh, um, artificial intelligence-based, 
uh, which is uh, very much used uh, from from our customers, which are uh, try to migrate uh, uh, to another suite, and they ask the question, "Hey, what's your answer to this?" To be honest, um, the answer is nowadays not so big. We do not have uh, the same AI-based um, assistance in place, but these days I learned from uh, Frank that. Uh, in cooperation with uh, Nextcloud, we are doing, we are going this road down. Uh, we are doing um, plugins and and uh, add-ins to to have same functionality, not just AI-based uh, assistance, but also um, connectivity to these uh, AI uh, tools we use uh, as ChatGPT or something like this. Ooh. So um, there's a lot of uh, work to do still here. Next one is, uh, which is really an old one, which is 20 years ago was a big issue, a big item, which is nowadays a big item. This is the, um, the issue with the document format. You all know that uh, LibreOffice and LibreOffice core technology, its native document format is open document format. Nowadays, not in version 1.2, but in version 1.3. LibreOffice is the uh, reference implementation of this open, free and open document format. Um, but in real life, uh, we have the situation that uh, a lot of customers want to change to a digital sovereign office productivity suite, but not to change the document format. The good news is LibreOffice can do Microsoft Office um, document format, so you can use all your old stuff, uh, which is on your on your server, on your file server, uh, with LibreOffice. But you have to analyze and define a strategy which uh, uh, defines the uh, use document format in the future. Keep in mind that all these um, uh, working in LibreOffice with not native document format could um, could follow up with uh, some layout issues or other issues or just uh, see the macro uh, item which is not working in both world and if you do this in a um, round trip yeah again and again with import and export uh, filters in it it uh, makes the problem with each cycle a lot of uh, Bigger. Yeah, and the next one is, is a, a new one, a very new one. It's um, something like a hype in Europe. It says, um, bring me digital sovereignty so everybody understands, oh, if I go down the road with Microsoft in the Microsoft Cloud, um, it's not the digital sovereign solution for me. And they realize that, um, that they also could risk their business uh, with such a solution. Yes, they could risk their business with just using an uh, Office Productivity Suite uh, in a not sovereign cloud. So here is um, a solution with a LibreOffice technology which can, uh, in, in combination with a file uh, um, sharing a solution, could do this in a digital sovereign way. But the um, issue here is that certainly um, um, you, you, you are permanently compared with a running solution uh, at, the, at the customer and it takes a little bit of time to migrate such um, installations which is used at every workplace in, in such a uh, customer and um, the patient for that, for such a um, migration project is very low, so it should be like a Big Bang, and Big Bang is not uh, always the best uh, solution to it. Yeah, as I promised, certainly a new development, new issue is the online cooperation, also on smart devices. Um, this brings uh, the next uh, issue in front. It is uh, something in combination with the UI we use, as I mentioned, uh, Microsoft Office uh, brought in this ribbon um, uh, UI and uh, we in LibreOffice uh, did quite a similar uh, UI alternative, but 
as an alternative, you can really choose by your own of if you want to have the old one or the new one, can changes there and can change of that. But this uh, makes also more uh, training stuff, for example. So if you have both UIs in your company, you want to have uh, supported both, you have to train on different UIs. And if you um, uh, have in mind that this is also in, on um, smart devices, then uh, there's a third variant of uh, uh, UI where you have to uh, search for functionality and so on. So this doubles or thirds the support um, um, efforts and, and the training efforts uh, for that. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, that's what was written also in the uh, headline of the talk, um, it's the human factor, or in other words, it's the resistance of change. Um, this is a uh, picture of the Kupra ross change curve. Uh, perhaps some of you know them. These are the different phases of uh, resistance of change, shock and denial. I could tell you stories about uh, users who come to me and, and say, hey, you are taking away my Microsoft Office uh, suite. I will fight you uh, till, till the end. Uh, really, really um, emotional uh, process. And you have to cover um, different phases of users. First of all, you have to take care of these emotions. This is absolutely um, a success factor to take care about this. Uh, you see something like anger and frustration and fear. If you don't take it um, uh, for serious, then uh, you will lose the users and they really get success with the fight against you. So there are different stages and different um, activities you can face these uh, phases. And what we have done in TDF is that we have uh, written down a migration protocol, which we are certifying for consultants uh, for these different stages. Um, first of all, do not a migration without any analysis and impact test um, for which integration are uh, needed in, in customer side with other with ERP systems or something like this and uh, which um, solutions you need for these integrations out of uh, Microsoft Office for LibreOffice. Then do the training and uh, parallel to all the stages uh, do in project management and permanently contact to the boss of the customer that it's one of the most success factor to have the support of the boss um, in this uh, customer side and so on. You can all read this on on the migration protocol of the Document Foundation, uh, which I will show um, with a link uh, if you are interested uh, to read it. So, to guarantee such a quality of migration, uh, documentation have decided seven to ten years ago to do a certification, but not such a normal certification, perhaps you know from others. Uh, especially also from Microsoft Office, we are doing this in a very, very special way. We are doing this in a um, one-to-one one face uh, manner. So every certified professional uh, in the categories migrators and trainers have, uh, have done such a um, review session with a uh, certified uh, people from the Document Foundation. Uh, the professional developer side is uh, to secure um, the uh, development of LibreOffice to have just contributions with a high quality and uh, with an, uh, people of trust uh, bringing in new code into LibreOffice uh, core technology. So if you are interested in, uh, have experience and, and interested in, in such process, you have to have, uh, to have to do some prerequisites. You have to show some experience out of documents, out of other um, uh, pieces uh, which you have worked on for such migrations and it will be seen by some few people out of a committee and uh, if they say hey this is in a professional manner this is in accordance more or less in accordance with the migration protocol for example then we go into a discussion with you um, try to to uh, get in connection with the community 
um, and to, to have a permanent conversation about these migration projects. And then you get the uh, stamp from the Document Foundation, you are a trusted migration uh, consultant or a trusted uh, LibreOffice trainer in different levels or different modules. Yeah, here are some uh, links and application forms if you are interested in. Uh, perhaps you ask, okay, I'm not that expert now <laughs> in uh, nowadays. Uh, I have here some flyers if you are interested in become a developer or migration consultant or just involved in the community. We have some information for you. Uh, I will lay it here so you can take some um, uh, flyers for that. There is also a link uh, where all information are written down um, where you could get involved into the uh, community and into such um, ecosystem partners which are doing uh, these migrations and trainings and, and so on. That's it. Hope I've done 